Hello, welcome to another edition of The Debate. I'm Kaveh Tahwai. Is the war on Syria imminent, even without legal approval from the United Nations? The United States and its allies are looking beyond the divided UN to justify their military action. But what kind of military action? Will the U.S. look to NATO, like it did with Kosovo? And will it use the R2P? That's the right to protect the doctrine for legitimacy of its campaign. Those questions and a lot more in this edition of the debate. The foreign-backed insurgency in Syria began over two years ago. The militants have so far been unable to even come close to overthrowing the government despite strong financial and military support from Western and regional governments. Damascus had said from the very beginning of the insurgency that foreign conspirators are behind the insurgency and trying to wreak havoc on Syria, which is part of a regional resistance front against Israel. The Syrian army currently has the upper hand against militants and has recently carried out successful mop-up operations across the country. Supporters of the insurgents now seem to be willing to resort to other means to pave the way for the downfall of the government of President Bashar al-Assad. The U.S. is now at the forefront of Western efforts to launch a military strike against Damascus under the pretext of responding to a recent chemical attack. Washington, which has repeatedly pledged unwavering support to Israel's security, now seems to be intent on starting an open war on the resistance front. If the West and Israel go ahead with the attack, they will probably not be the ones who decide when to end the war. Several countries, including Russia and Iran, have warned of unpredictable and uncontrollable consequences. Israel, which is the closest U.S. ally in the region, is expected to pay a heavy price for any aggression. That's because Damascus has vowed to defend itself and Tel Aviv is well within its reach. The plans for striking Syria have been praised by some regional Arab countries, including Saudi Arabia. The Saudi intelligence chief, Prince Bandar bin Sultan, has been actively ratcheting up anti-Syrian support and reports say he has been collaborating with the CIA as the U.S. beats the drums of war. The U.S. is planning to attack Syria under the pretext of a chemical attack which is denied by Damascus. Earlier in 2013, the Syrian government warned that insurgents could use chemical weapons in civilian areas and accused Damascus of launching the attack to pave the way for foreign intervention. The U.S. is planning to attack another country under the pretext of chemical weapons without providing any concrete evidence. That rings a bell. America and its allies invaded Iraq in 2003 under similar circumstances. The U.S. and Britain accused the regime of former dictator Saddam Hussein of possessing chemical and biological weapons and attacked Iraq. The alleged weapons were never found and the long costly war destroyed Iraq's infrastructure. The coming days will tell whether Syria will become the victim of a scenario like the one in Iraq. Let's get this debate going. We have former U.S. Marine and war veteran Kenneth O'Keefe joining us from London and also senior fellow at the Center for American Progress, Lawrence Korb, who joins us from Washington. Gentlemen, welcome. Lawrence Korb, first to you. Are we to conclude right now that it's not a question of if but rather when? Well, I think so. I think we're talking about very limited uh, strikes that will not attempt to tip the balance of the war, but simply to send a message to uh, Assad and the world that given the Rome statue, the Geneva, uh, you know, Geneva Accords and the international uh, you know, a ban on chemical weapons that they're simply not acceptable to be used. Ken O'Keefe, do you agree with that? I mean, some are saying, even U.S. lawmakers, that what, Ken, uh, what uh, Lawrence Corp there said then amounts to somewhat of a symbolic uh, uh, type uh, strike, uh, if anything. Well, I, I don't agree at all. First off, how is it possible that anybody with any kind of sanity would consider the United States or Britain or the West in general to be in any kind of position to be uh, punishing anyone for any illegalities. If we want to take a look at Iraq, there is at least one million, probably even close to two million dead. We invaded that country, destroyed it, created millions of orphans, millions of refugees, and never even so much as apologized for that. Let's go back to Vietnam where we dropped uh, 20 million bombs, more than all of World War II combined. We have destroyed so many countries. We have tortured and killed and maimed and raped around this planet. Who in the hell in their right mind would consider the United States or the West in general to be in any position to punish anybody? Never mind the obvious facts that this is a false flag attack and a long list of false flag attacks, which let's get into that, please. Yes, we will. And we'd like to get into the issue of morality here. 
Lawrence Corp. If we can, the U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry described the use of chemical weapons in Syria, and I'm sure you're familiar now with this adjective, moral obscenity, as he said. And I'm sure you've heard about foreign policy, how they revealed one day before that speech the declassified CIA files showing that back in the 80s Saddam Hussein was actually uh, aided by the U.S. in terms of the chemical attacks that it exercised on Iran. Can you Iran. speak a little louder? You're, you're, just, you're fading in and out here. Okay. I'm talking about uh, the moral obscenity adjective that U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry described. I'm looking at that and how that just a day before that speech, foreign policy came out and uh, showed proof that the CIA was involved in the uh, chemical attack that Saddam Hussein uh, exercised against Iran. Doesn't that, in a sense, show the hypocrisy that's involved when we're talking about the morality of the use of chemical weapons, when the CIA itself was involved with the chemical attacks that Saddam Hussein used against Iran? Well, there's no doubt about the fact that they knew that Saddam would use, use the chemical weapons and didn't speak out when they were wrong back then. But that was before the international treaty banning chemical weapons, which doesn't come till the, uh, till the 90s. And so it's a different, uh, it's a different, uh, a different, different, different era. You have a treaty that went into effect in 1993 what you're talking about was back in the uh, in the, in the early early 19, uh, 1980s. But you're right; they should, the United States and other countries should have spoken out about uh, the use of chemical weapons. We didn't use them, but we knew that uh, Saddam was going to uh, was going to use them against the Iranians to prevent a, a breakthrough uh, in the in that war. Ken O'Keefe, it's kind of ironic that you have the U.N. Secretary General Ban Ki-moon and the U.N. Special Envoy Lakhtar Brahimi practically, if you really look at it, they're almost begging for the U.S. and its allies, including France and the U.K., uh, to go through the Security Council in order to get backing for this. Uh, but, of course, they're saying let the chemical uh, investigation by the U.N. inspectors take place and for results to come out. Uh, I mean, what does that mean in terms of international law, what the U.S., U.K., and France in particular are pursuing here? Well, we don't operate under international law. What we have is the color of law, the law of the jungle, in which the rich and the powerful basically determine what goes and what doesn't go. Iraq is a perfect example of that. Why isn't Tony Blair and George Bush rotting away in a prison cell for the rest of their lives? Because the law is not being applied. These are war criminals and they should be in prison for the rest of their lives, if not executed, if their own rules were adhered to for their own uh, crimes. Not only that, but we need, to, we need to really understand the truth here. First off, all of these players, these politicians, are nothing more than puppets. They don't serve the people. There is no real democracy. They really serve the rich and powerful who run the world, and that would be the bankers who control the money supply. The bankers, of course, make huge amounts of money. Whether they make bad investments or not, wars are great for them, and ultimately they control the politicians, and that is why we, we see these policies. Obama and Cameron are nothing more than puppets who read the script, and the script is, we need another war. And the reason why we need another war, according to these psychopaths who are running the world, is because more more and more people, despite the clueless masses who continue to be entranced by things so ridiculous as X Factor and American Idol, there is larger numbers of, of people around the world who are realizing the truth and beginning to recapture the capacity to think for themselves. And they can see that these people who are being put in positions of public trust are defying that trust and representing an agenda which they could never speak about openly because they're nothing more than prostitutes and nothing more than minions for the powers that be. Lawrence Korb, uh, you talked about what was uh, a limited strike. I'm looking at some of the statements that are coming out from uh, the uh, U.S. officials, and they have uh, this particular two that I'm going to refer to said they want to remain anonymous. But AFB reported, if there is action taken, and I'm quoting, it must be clearly defined what the objective is and why, and based on clear facts. Does the U.S. have that right now? Well, again, that's what I, they, they, the president has made it very clear and the people around him, they don't want to get involved in this war and pick one side over the other. In fact, President Obama has been criticized for not getting involved uh, in, this, uh, in, this, in, this, in this war uh, at all. And what they're talking about are limited strikes that would deal with the headquarters of the people who, uh, you know, ordered these chemical strikes deal with the communications nodes 
of, uh, of the people, not the chemical weapons themselves, because that would create all kinds of problems. But they also said, this is the other anonymous uh, U.S. official, that uh, it's going to be more than a single set of military strikes, and the options are not limited just to one day of an assault. It kind of goes against what the U.S. has said. What are we looking at here? Uh, there's got to be some kind of clarity coming from perhaps uh, 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 somebody like you from the Center for American Progress that has an idea about what the intentions are behind the strike. It can't be just they're going to go in limited basis, then sit back and have the status quo continue. I mean, is that really, does that sound feasible or logical even? Well, I think their intention, they've got four destroyers. Each of the destroyers has 24 missiles. So you're talking about 100 missiles all told. They've been very clear they're not going to use, uh, use aircraft. And my guess is they will go in and strike the, the headquarters of the, of the groups that control these chemical weapons, some of their communications uh, facilities, some of the troops that have been involved in this, and basically send that message. Now, if the uh, Assad government should decide to ignore that or use chemical weapons again, then I think you would uh, see, uh, see further strikes. But the intention here is to send a signal that after the treaty uh, that bans the use of chemical weapons, these will not be tolerated anymore. The United States is not trying to get involved in this war. In fact, the president has been criticized by some of our allies and people here at home for not doing more. You know, it's very interesting, Ken O'Keefe. Uh, I don't know if you caught the presser that uh, Bashar al Jaffrey, uh, Syria's envoy to the UN, had earlier, a couple hours back. And he uh, said, this is all because of Israel. Israel is actually responsible behind the uprisings from North Africa, North Africa throughout the Middle East. Uh, and uh, this is a push by Israel onto the uh, U.S. to uh, uh, basically go and attack Syria. What is Israel's role in this, Ken O'Keefe? Well, the Greater Israel Project is all about uh, destabilizing uh, surrounding nations, ultimately in pursuit of this dream of Greater Israel from the Euphrates down to the Nile all the way over to the Eastern Mediterranean. This is the dream of these psychopaths, and so destabilizing governments, creating sectarian strife, is all part of that menu and all part of the design to create Greater Israel. So that, that, that goes uh, it's self-evident. But I have to go back to what this gentleman is saying in Washington, D.C. about America not wanting to get involved or Obama not getting involved. What are you talking about? We have been arming people directly who are Al-Qaeda. Al-Nusra Front is Al-Qaeda. These people are psychopaths to the worst order. They are conducting suicide attacks. They are gassing people. We know Carla Del Ponte said in May that it was the so-called rebels in Syria that were using sarin gas, not the, the uh, Bashar al-Assad regime. No, it was not. We know that the United States president is arming people who are on the U.S. terrorist list. He should be convicted of aiding and abetting, giving material support to a terrorist organization, but then again, you know what, we are, we, the West, the United States in particular, Israel and Britain, are the biggest terrorists on the planet. So our little junior partners in Al-Qaeda, which is nothing more than a CIA database, thus the name Al-Qaeda, this is nothing more than a group of terrorists working together, each playing one different role, but all of them working together for the same goal, which is to maintain this hideous and sick and twisted, unjust world that we have, which is a perpetual state of war. Always one illusion, one boogeyman after another, but the fact is Obama is nothing more than a puppet war criminal, just like his predecessor and every other U.S. president before him. So please don't tell people out there that the U.S. is not involved. It's directly involved, and it is arming people who are absolute psychopaths. Lawrence Corp, your reaction? Well, first of all, it's not. It's providing non-lethal aid, and it's discriminating among the groups. In fact, after the last round of chemical, chemical attacks, the United States <clears throat> wanted to increase uh, the aid, but General Dempsey, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, basically said we, we do not, uh, you know, we can't discriminate among the rebels. And so none of that equipment has, uh, has, has gone there. So this idea that somehow, and remember, this was started in Syria, like in Tunisia, by people who are concerned about the fact that uh, you had an authoritarian government that was basically not giving people all the rights and freedoms that people, uh, you know, people deserve. We had nothing to do 
with uh, st starting that. From the point of view of the United States and Israel before all of this, we were very content with the world the way that it was. Senator, uh, then Senator Kerry, now Secretary Kerry, actually went and visited Assad back in 2006, uh, you know, to try and reestablish relations. So we were not, did not start this, did not want this to happen. But once it did, and the Assad regime cracked down on these people mercilessly, the international community began, and it's not just the United States. The Arab League, for example, is very, very concerned. The United Arab Emirates concerned. They're providing much more equipment than we are providing uh, to, those, uh, to, those, to those people. We want to see, and again, President Obama, about a year ago, his only statement was that using chemical weapons, because we know that Syria had them, will be crossing a red line. And they've obviously done that. Now, they're going to present their information here in the next day or so before they take military action. And then I suggest that all of the people who are claiming that it wasn't Assad sit back and take a look and find out exactly uh, you know, what happened. If the Assad regime had not uh, been involved in this, why wouldn't they let the UN inspectors in right away to ascertain they wouldn't? They waited till four or five days until the place got cleaned up. They didn't wait four or five days. Uh, that was clear of what happened. Uh, they had to get together uh, a safety precautionary measures for the sites to be visited. Ken O'Keefe, there is this uh, uh, defense uh, that the Syrian government is aptly uh, presenting. Walid al did that yesterday, and then we had Bashar al Jafari today talk about how they've allowed the inspectors to go in. But it seems, and why is that? I, and I'm thinking further, Ken O'Keefe, don't they have intelligence? Doesn't the United States already know who is behind this? It's obvious it's not the Syrian government. Uh, Natalis has said two possibilities. One, uh, obviously, being the insurgents who have done this, and at a very low scale, perhaps, maybe uh, some uh, uh, low-ranking soldiers of the Syrian army not uh, uh, carrying through orders of not using chemical weapons, but going out on their own, which they've said is a very small possibility of that. Uh, why doesn't the U.S. want to wait, along with its allies, for the, chemical, uh, for the inspectors to analyze what has come out and then make an announcement based on that before they move in or attack? Because the United States, the well, United States has never been interested in anything. Ken O'Keefe, go ahead. Has never been interested in anything other than war. The United States is in a perpetual state of war because the bankers control the politicians and they read the script as given to them by the banksters and they make huge amounts of money off of this. What this gentleman is saying about the United States not wanting war, not wanting to get involved is like Iraq 2.0. It's a repeat of the same rubbish that was said, oh we don't want war, uh, you know, war is a last resort. That's absolutely untrue, it's a lie. Those that are in government are nothing more than prostitutes who are carrying out the orders of those who are in charge of them, and those that are in charge want another war. And part of that is what we discussed earlier, the Greater Israel Project, to destabilize any Arab regime which might have any kind of autonomy and self-determination. Any regime in the Arab world that is not an absolute puppet cannot be tolerated. And who are the nations that we target? Those that are not puppets. We don't target those like the Saudi regime, which is the biggest human rights violator in that region. It's cutting off people's heads in public, cutting off hands. It is the most grotesque regime on the planet, and yet we give that regime weapons, and it's no problem whatsoever. The duplicity and hypocrisy of the United States and the West can't even be measured. It is so enormous. And these mouthpieces, such as this gentleman in Washington, is only doing a disservice to himself and his country. And the fact is that American sons and daughters will get involved in this yet again, and these chicken hawks who are pretending to care about the Syrian people are going to be sacrificing not their own sons and daughters. I would like this man to send his sons and daughters and his grandchildren off to Syria when this turns into a greater conflict because this is what we're flirting with is a world war, a third world war. This is not a joke. We are flirting with a third world war on the basis that apparently we care so much about the Syrian people, just like we care so much about the Iraqi people and the Afghani people. The only people that buy this sort of stuff are either bought off prostitutes or the dumbest of the dumb. And we're also led to believe that uh, Assad is the dumbest idiot dictator on the planet now, isn't he? Because he invited UN inspectors to come in and he brought them in on the very day that they come in, he decides to attack his own people 10 miles away from where the inspectors arrive. This is beyond ridiculous. And the only people that buy this, again, are bought off prostitutes or the dumbest of the dumb. 
Uh, moving on to another statement, since we're running, uh, running out of time quickly, Lawrence Korb, it was interesting when Jane Carney said that this operation is not going to be about regime change in Syria. Don't you find that to be a bit odd? I mean, I talk about regime change all along and then him saying that. Uh, that has a lot of weight to it. Tell us your reaction when you heard that. Well, I, that's the policy. Our policy is not uh, regime change. We would like, we were supposed to have a conference this month with the Russians to talk about, uh, you know, coming to some sort of accommodation with the Assad regime and the, uh, and, and, and the rebels. No, I mean, the United States basically does not get, want to get involved militarily. They, as I said, the president has been under tremendous pressure both from our, our allies and, and from uh, uh, certain segments of the American uh, population, like John McCain, to do more. And he hasn't. The, another country, the Turks are very concerned about what happened. And the Turks are not, uh, you know, American puppets or, or any, anything, anything like that. They're, in fact, if something happens there, if the strikes take place, the Turks uh, will be uh, very, very supportive of it. Uh, uh, Ken O'Keefe, uh, we've alluded to this uh, throughout this co conversation and debate, but there are many who are not buying the U.S. Uh, viewpoints. They're not buying what the U.K. and France are doing along with the U.S. because they're saying that what the U.S. is saying, limited in scope, is not going to hardly cripple Assad's a sizable military infrastructure and forces unless this is a wider scale war. Do you think that's what we're looking at? Well, there's no question that they, they don't intend for limited strikes, and that's not going to do anything. They, they weren't going to go in full scale. That's the plan. Of course, they'll use pretext to be able to justify the initial attack, and then they'll concoct more things to justify a greater involvement. The, the Daily Mail reported here in the UK, and it's commonly understood to those who are paying attention that defense contractors, leaked emails from defense contractors, proved that there was already an approved plan from Obama down to give these psychopath terrorists Al Nusra Front chemical weapons. We know that Al Nusra Front, 12 individuals in Turkey were caught with two kilos of sarin gas. Where did they get that from? And, and this is, you know, clearly a false flag. We understand this to be true, and it's the only way that they could justify an attack at all. And I have to say, I'm, I'm happy that the gentleman in Washington mentioned uh, Dempsey, General Dempsey of the Joint Chiefs, because I'll tell you what, more than anything else, it is the true American patriots, those who are sick and tired of having given up their life to basically serve the American dream, the American uh, nation, the Constitution that they swore to uphold. It's those military men and women. It's you now. It's coming to you now. Are you a patriot or are you not? Are you going to let your nation descend even further into the chaos and corruption that has been so sick and so twisted that it's destroying American lives as well as the rest of the world to the tune of 22 American servicemen a day who are committing suicide? Are you going to sacrifice more of your American sons and daughters for Israeli wars, for Zionist wars? Are you going to continue to do that because you are not a patriot? You are in fact aiding and abetting the terrorists you supposedly think you're fighting against and those Americans who are waking up to this I hope to God in the military in particular that you refuse your orders and this is why the people of America who are refusing to buy this nonsense the overwhelming majority do not support any kind of attack on Syria and in those in the military I know that the powers that be are very very frightened that high ups within the military will refuse the orders and I hope this is exactly what happens if an attack on Syria occurs very well we're gonna leave it there thank you very much former US Marine and war veteran there Ken O'Keefe talking to us from London and thank you very much from the senior fellow at Center for American Progress Lauren Corp who spoke to us from Washington any questions comments do send it to us newsroom at press is our email address from me and the team here in the capital Tehran it's goodbye